Believe in Everything Auburn is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all your college basketball betting this season. Get analysis of every play, prop, and point at Bet Online. You'll find the latest odds, bracket contests, team matchups, and game trends at Bet Online, plus updated odds for everything from live games, championships, right through to the Final Four and Championship Game. Bet Online is your college basketball headquarters this season so head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and receive a 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit if you use our promo code believe b-l-e-a-v at betonline.ag where the game starts war eagle everyone welcome back to believe in everything auburn taylor davis jason campbell you know the drill except two in a week who are we what's <laughs> happening this I is know, a right? twofer, people, and uh, if if all goes well, we're going to aim to keep doing this on into football season. A Monday episode to kind of recap the weekend, and a Thursday, maybe sometimes Friday episode to preview the weekend. So give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. If you're interested in having two a week, we are going to try this out and see how it goes. So we welcome you in. We are also on YouTube. If you are listening as a podcast, you can watch us on video on Believe's YouTube channel. So we're just stepping it up. Some exciting things on the horizon. And Jay and I are going to catch you up on a few things before we head into the weekend, which... I always love a Thursday. <laughs> I don't know how you feel, Jay. Like Friday and Saturday is great, but like I always like a Thursday too because you're like right on the cusp of it, you know? Yeah, Thursday's awesome. Um, you know, you get that one more workout in on Friday before the weekend yeah. starts. So you try to go hard just to get yourself a little <laughs> bit of extra calories to, you know, that put in that little dessert that you like to get on the weekends. There and, you go. Uh, but this weekend you know with basketball going on and yeah things like that you know it's a lot of eating going on it's a lot of chips and salsa so why does it you know? it always comes back to food with you it's just one thing i can count on hey you know food is my go-to it's my hobby it is. You know, yeah <laughs> my yeah hobby. <laughs> you know? spoken like a true former athlete I guess I really can't say food is my hobby. Our renovations probably is my hobby because I like renovating different things. I like uh Dude. you know designing stuff so that's another hobby for another day. The whole time we have done this podcast, the whole time <laughs> I've known you, pretty much every week it's like, well, somebody's here working on the blah, 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 or I got to get somebody out here to look at the yada, yada. I mean, just always something. Uh, but Well, I say this though, Tyler. I'm always food and renovations. Right? You're always going to weddings or participating <sighs> in weddings. Dude. So I'm trying to think of this movie that I saw, like the girl that always was in everybody's wedding. And she was just like, it's my turn. I'm, 27 I'm, dresses I'm, or something like that. Yeah, something movie yeah. I saw. But, you know, one day, one day, one day, one, one day, day when when the good Lord has it planned for me. But yeah. uh, yes, I actually have my best friend's wedding in May. I am her maid of honor. Shout out, Allison, also an Auburn grad. And a relative, but also a friend <laughs> because we're close in age, Abby, shout out Abby, also an Auburn fan. Um, they are both getting married in May, a week apart. I am wow. in both. And wait for it. They chose the same bridesmaid's dress. So I am doubling up. <laughs> oh, my good. And see, the thing about it, they always pick you to be the maid of honor. So you must know how to throw a good party. I do know how to throw a good party. Or I'm just a good friend, Jay. Maybe that's what it means. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure almost positive that you're a good oh, friend. We'll but say that. Also, know somebody knows how to entertain. That's so, true. Yeah. That is true. I uh, I definitely think I do. We <laughs> we should tally the people who have planned something for and ask them. But nonetheless, it's always an exciting time. Spring, lots of stuff going on. So we're gonna catch you up on what's happened in the last few days. Pro Day being the main one. So let's kind of talk about it a little bit and which guys participated. We all know the one that certainly made headlines. <laughs> so we'll get there. But all 32 NFL teams were accounted for and had representation attend Auburn's Pro Day this week. 
I'm going to run through the guys who participated real fast. Running back, Tank Bigsby. Defensive end, Marcus Bragg. Defensive tackle, Marquise Burks. Kicker, Anders Carlson. Center, Brandon Council. Edge, Derek Hall. Wide receiver, Shedrick Jackson. Defensive tackle, Morris Joseph. Edge, Eku Leota. Linebacker, Owen Papo. Tight end, John Samuel Shanker. Defensive tackle, Colby Wooden. Offensive tackle, Killian Zierer. And wide receiver, Kaylin Newton. Which brings us to the obvious. <laughs> Cam Newton returned to the Plains and kind of acted as the quarterback for these <laughs> prospective kids. He threw more than 30 passes on the day. And um, look, I, I think that it's intentional, right? I mean, he's not currently with a team and certainly f- believes he could be and and wants to be. So I was I was shocked when I saw it, honestly, because I was like, <laughs> wait a minute, what is happening? But I... I mean, first of all, I don't guess I even knew that you could do that. But of course, I mean, a, a former wanting a, another shot. It's just crazy when you think about the career and who he's been, you know, a, as a legend in honestly collegiate, of course. But he had his his time to shine in the NF. He was an MVP. He, he led the Panthers to the Super Bowl. And to right. think that he now, all these years later, is back at his alma mater trying to get chances at a pro day, it's really crazy just to kind of see how it all unfolded. But let's just start with Cam, because I think it's yeah. been the most obvious and most glaring. He turns 34 in May. He hasn't played a snap in the NFL since 2021 when he had eight games with the Panthers. He was 0-5 as a starter, and he averaged 85 and a half passing yards per game. He's back at Pro Day at Auburn saying he can still be playing at that level. Do you think he can? I tell you what, I almost wanted to go back out there at Pro Day. Just make it a a great Auburn (laughs) alumni, you know, quarterback festival. You know, you got Holden Gurner out there participating, and he's not even eligible yet. So (laughs) They should have brought you out, man. Just just come out of retirement, you know. Jay, go out there (laughs) and throw a couple passes till your arm falls off. (laughs) But I'll say this. Um. I thought he would, I thought he had retired, honestly. Mm-hmm. And then now officially I know that he didn't retire and he still wants to play the game of football. And, you know, he's trying to put it out there. He said there's 32 other quarterbacks that he noticed not better than him. And and the thing about that is you understand it's a business. You understand as well, like you always believe in your talents and your ability to go out there and compete and play at a high level. But also it's about opportunities. And then the other aspect of it is I think a lot with Cam is people feel like he comes into a locker room. A lot of the young kids used to watch him play. Right. And if they're trying to develop some young guys, it's almost like it it works against him to the point that he comes in, all the attention immediately kind of goes towards him because everything that comes along with Cam, you know, uh, he's a big media person, you know, he's a, he has his podcast show. He has different things that he does that kind of brings a lot of attention towards his way. And some franchises may be afraid of that because, you know, they probably not equipped enough to handle it. But my whole thing is about if a guy can play, he can play, you know, give him, give him a chance to play. But I just honestly feel like it's nothing about his athletic ability. I just honestly think it's just a lot to do with, you know, everything that has to come along with Cam because he is a big public figure and um, and everything. So I just I just think teams are afraid of that which they shouldn't be because, you know, you see players all the time, stuff comes along with them uh, and everything. I think that's the same reason OBJ hasn't found a home just yet, you know, because OBJ still talented, very talented receiver, but it's just everything that comes with him, the media, the, you know, so much, you know, surrounding them and a lot of teams that they don't feel like it's mature enough, you know, they can't handle that type of locker room. And I just feel like for Cam, I think he's best equipped going somewhere where it is a, a mature locker room, especially if he wants to get back in playing. I wouldn't mind seeing him in Atlanta, but I know they just signed Taylor Heineke uh, yeah. to back up, uh, to back up, um, was it Ridden, Rid- Riddick? Quarterback. So, you know, maybe Cam would have been a good spot there just because simple fact he's from Atlanta. Uh, he knows the NFC South. He could help someone like Desmond Riddick uh, grow and, and everything in the game. But it's almost like once you're out of football for a year as a quarterback, it's almost like you're forgotten. They kind of moved on. And uh, and for him, he still wants to play because he's very, very competitive. Right. I I, I hear you, and I think you make some good points. I, I, I think I disagree a little bit, though, because I think 
you know, the attention that comes with it, the Mm -hmm. media frenzy that it's going to be, the fandom being focused on one guy instead of a team. That is the case when you have a guy like Tom Brady and not Mm -hmm. one of those teams would have turned Tom Brady away. So I actually do think it's about his athletic ability. And I think Mm -hmm. it's about not knowing if he still has it the way we saw him have it back in the day. And you add what his persona has become, and that's kind of the same thing with OBJ. They became inconsistent in their play. You weren't sure if they still were the dynamic athlete that we once were. And now you've got all of this added, sometimes controversy that has followed the two of them. But I think if you've got a guy with consistent, proven athletic ability, Tom being an example, you don't care what else it comes with because he can win you freaking ball games. And I think at the end of the day, Cam became so inconsistent and so injury prone that that's ultimately what the deciding factors come down to. We are down to subject our locker room to some of this chaos if you're definitely going to win us ball games. I don't think any of these teams know for sure that Cam can still do that. I think I I think this. If I have a young quarterback and Cam mm-hmm. just came out and said he doesn't think there's 32 NFL quarterbacks that's better than him. And so hearing that, if he goes to any team, he wants to do what? Compete for the job. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? And then I think a lot of teams already say, okay, we have our young quarterback that we're trying to get ready for the future. Mm-hmm. I think if it would came from a place where he didn't mind coming in you know, just to get on the roster, try to help a young guy out and everything like that, that maybe they would give that opportunity. But they know Cam wants to come in and he wants to do what? Start. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I think it scares some teams because they don't want to make their younger quarterback fragile. Yeah. And which he shouldn't be anyway, because there's always going to be competition, Mm -hmm. whether you're in college, whether you're in pro or whether in business or anything, there's competition. But I think they're afraid of making their young quarterback fragile. I think yeah. it would have to be somewhere where there's a veteran quarterback, which there's not a lot of now. Uh, you know, veteran quarterbacks are kind of middle age right now. You got yeah. the, so I just feel like that's a big reason that he wasn't in the league last year because I think there's a spot for him to play. But I just okay. also think that the reason it was is because – of who they already have on the roster and not sure that quarterback can accept Cam being in the same meeting room. Sure. Looking feel like they're looking over their shoulder every time they mess up. When is he going to be playing? And of course, you know, the one that garnered a lot of social media attention was some movement, 50 yard pass. And everyone's like, he's still got it. He's still got it. Explain from a quarterback perspective, just the difference between drills like that versus playing in a live game in the NFL, because I think his durability is really what's been in question. Oh yeah. Cam's taken a lot of hits over the years. Um, You know, I used to hear guys say it all the time, like, Oh, don't worry about it now. What you start getting your forties and fifties and you'll start kind of revisiting some of those hits and mm-hmm. they're not lying. You know, there's certain days now I wake up still sore. Yeah. You know, just out the blue or certain days that a nagging injury Man. from 10 years ago or 15 years ago, just all of a sudden pop back up and there's scar tissues and there's different yeah. things you got to go in and, and deal with to try to get your body back healthy from that standpoint. So I just think like throwing on pro day, it's all about the fam for the scouts. Let's be honest. They come to pro days and everything just to kind of see things in person, just to kind of get a, you know, up close opportunity to either talk to you or just see if they can see what they, what they see on film is the same thing they see in a workout. You Mm -hmm. know, most of the guys already know like where they want to draft these guys at. Uh, I think Cam saw it as an opportunity too. It's like, okay, Hey, if I can't get 32 teams to come watch me just, you know, give me a call to come and work out for them. How about I just go to Auburn's Pro Day and give yeah. them an opportunity because I know they're going to be there to position myself to just show them that I can still throw the football. Yeah. Uh, you know, because for him, it's it's still about lining up in the offense. You got to be able to see, throw the ball at the barrel, a defensive lineman, defensive tackle, linebacker coming through the A-gap, you know, about to blow your chest up. You know, that's, that's reacting to football. They know he's played a long time in the NFL. Right. He can do that. Otherwise, you don't play that long. I mm-hmm. think the aspect for them was I think he just wanted to show them, like, look, I can still throw the ball because a lot of people had a question about his shoulder. I yeah. don't know if a lot of people remember it his never shoulder. seemed the same after. Right. So I think a lot of that, a lot of people was wondering, like, I wonder is the arm strength still the same? Sure. And I think he wanted to kind of show people, like, I can still throw the football 
and my arm and my shoulder is healthy. So if there right. was ever a concern, I'm healthy. Um, the other thing is that for, for guys like Holden Gurner, Shanker and Tank Bisbee specifically picked him to throw them the ball. Really? Yeah, so they specifically picked him to throw them the ball on pro day. Well, how about and, that? And I read the scout said this kid can spin the ball. He makes a lot of pro-level throws, and they are going to continue to follow him throughout his career. So it benefited Holden as well, being out there throwing. Because back in the day when I was coming through, you couldn't do you couldn't do that. You had right. to be eligible for the draft, or you had to play at the school and you was out, and you can come back and work out. Got but it. Now, you just like Marvin Harrison Jr. did it at Ohio State. Uh -huh. You know, he can't even be draft eligible this year, but he worked out on pro day. So it benefited someone like Holden Gurner because now there's a lot of eyes on him. And now people around Auburn are buzzing like, okay, could this kid possibly be QB1? You know, uh, can he grasp the offense? Because Tank had high praise for him. Shanker had high praise for him. NFL scouts had high praise for him. That's uh, interesting. So – you know, that as a young quarterback got to make you feel good. And you're out there throwing this to one of Auburn's greats, you yeah. know, and, and pro day. So with that much attention around you and you know that you have to deliver accurate passes for Tank and Shanker to be able to show the NFL that they can catch, that's right. pressure for a young fella. So yeah. the fact that he was able to go out there and do that, I think he's taking a step forward and saying, look, I accept any and all challenges right now mm -hmm. to try to position myself to be QB1. I am very impressed by that. I did not realize that that mm -hmm. was like a teammate request, yeah, which a teammate request. says a lot. I, I mean, look, I hope it put our coaching staff <laughs> on notice. Heck, let's <laughs> let's see this thing. Because, I mean, look, yeah. when you're in a situation like that, if you're on the receiving end, what you're looking for is accuracy. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, TJ and Robbie have struggled in that department. We don't need anyone on pro day who can scramble. That ain't going to do much for me. Like, I need someone to get me the ball. So, that that does that says a lot so but what it also does jay is kind of puts him in a spotlight for potential transfer situations so right. auburn has to handle it appropriately because if he continues to get acknowledgement from mm -hmm. scouts and reps like that out of a pro day but he's considered third string where he is other schools are calling no right. question about that so Right. Auburn's got to be careful or it's going to be another one that slips through the cracks. Yeah. Um, real quickly though, the guys that I ran through who did participate other than cam, let's talk about our guys actually <laughs> on the roster who are trying to pursue their right. shot at an yeah. NFL roster. Obviously a lot of high praise for Shedrick Jackson, a four, two, five unofficial 40 for him at pro day. Um, a, a lot of other guys getting high praise and, you know, you, you definitely enjoy the opportunity to get back in front of those guys face to face, Derek Hall as expected. Uh, what other guys did you hear positive feedback out of pro day? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Shedder Jackson, that one shocked me. Uh, not just from a perspective. I've always thought he had a pro proto style body for a receiver. Yeah. You know, if you've ever been around him, he's he's his physique is strong. You know, he's he's he he's, is all muscle. He's, right. He's all muscle. So he kind of reminds you of a DJ Metcalf, just not as tall. Yeah. But uh to go out and run a four two five, like immediately he's just put himself in an opportunity to make someone's camp if he doesn't get drafted. Okay. Uh he's gonna be in camp for somebody. Uh, I think the thing that helped out with Shanker, it helped out him was being able to just show people he can pass catch because mm -hmm. no one utilizes fullbacks anymore in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, they take the third screen running back, I mean, third screen tight end and put him at a fullback position where they motion him into the backfield as a lead blocker. He's yep. done that. So that he already shown that over these seven years that he played Auburn. You know, uh, then you think about – him as a catcher, they want to know, can he catch the ball on first and third down situations? And mm -hmm. I think that was a big reason why he picked holding and throwing the ball because he wanted someone with accuracy and timing sure. that he can showcase that. Um, Tank Bisbee, no one saw Tank catch a lot of passes out of college. You know, we had mostly running quarterbacks. Even when Bo, Bo was here, Bo Nitz, he ran a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, then last year with we know he ran a lot. So no one's really saw him catch the ball out of the backfield because he didn't play a lot on third downs. Jacquez did. So now I think it benefited him as well, being able to catch some passes out of the backfield, showing that he can increase. I mean, showing that he can, that he's very catchable. To, his hands are soft enough to catch passes on third downs, not just on a first, run, second down running back. I think what helped him the most was his 40. 
He ended up clocking yeah. a four five something at the combine, you know, clocking a four four something here. So he almost improved his forty by ten. And uh, Derek Hall, I think Derek Hall is the biggest winner, uh, just because yeah. of the simple fact that uh, Derek, they say his motor, they put him through linebacker drills and defensive end drills, so he could play in a thirty four or he could play in a four three. Right. So, and they say his motor, and he just seem, not seem to get tired. So I think that benefit him because. Jalen Carter at Georgia, I heard the opposite. Yeah. I heard, you know, he looked out of shape. Bond. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I think Derrick Hall is climbing the ladder. Kobe Wooden to me is uh, is a guy I think can be an X factor. Yeah. I just really think he's a Pittsburgh, still a Baltimore Ravens type player. You yeah. know, I, I just really think uh, he fits in that division. Uh, so I was impressed with Pro Day. I like the Pro Day shirts, which we had that. Um, <laughs> you know, it was good to see all 32 teams there. That's a good sign. Uh, I really think also Cam participated because his brother, Caitlin Newton, was there. That was pretty cool. Um, so I think that was an opportunity to have a one shining moment uh, since we were in March Madness. Uh, but overall, you know, we'll see what happens. April is right upon us. I am so excited to see how all of that shapes up when the draft gets here April 27th. And I am also excited to see how this March Madness all shapes up. It is continuing tonight. The Sweet 16 begins. So we are going to send you into the weekend with our picks. We also got Jay to get his hands on his bracket. So we are not doing the runaround like we did on Monday. God bless us. Um, Okay, so let's talk tonight. So we've got into the Sweet 16, obviously. So we are going to say our what our brackets said for this weekend, which clearly have the potential to be wrong. Several of mine are. And then Mm. now knowing what we know and who is actually playing tonight and this weekend, we'll give our picks for the respective games. So let's go ahead and start 530 tonight, Kansas state, Michigan state, K state is a three seed. Michigan state is a seven I had Kentucky Marquette in this matchup, so I was completely wrong. And I, this matchup is so intriguing to me. K-State has really surprised a lot of people, but like we said on Monday, like, why go against Izzo? This is what he does. And they, I mean, Marquette was a really good team. And so to be in the situation they're in, I'm going to go Michigan State. Well, unlike you, I had... Kansas State versus Marquette in this matchup. Oh, you had K-State making it. Good call, Jay. Yeah, yeah. So I am going with – it's hard to go against Tom Izzo. It Michigan really State is. because it's like March Madness. His teams are so well prepared. Yeah. They could actually make it all the way to the Elite Eight. I mean, to the Final Four. They definitely could. So you go Michigan. on Michigan State too? Yeah, Michigan all State. Right. Okay, so then 6.15 p.m., we've got Arkansas, UConn. Arkansas, an eight seed. UConn, a four seed. I had Kansas, UConn for this matchup. I I think a lot of people uh, had Kansas making it further than they did as the reigning national champs, but got upset by Arkansas by one point. UConn looks pretty strong. But I think Arkansas is going to ride momentum. I'm going to go. Oh, okay. I'm going to go woo pig. Uh, yeah, Arkansas colors on today, so that makes sense. Kind of. Uh, well, close <laughs> enough. Well, in this matchup, I had beforehand, I had Kansas and UConn. Kansas, UConn. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we had the same yeah. pick out of that. But yeah, Kansas, UConn. Who do you pick tonight? Tonight, I am going Arkansas Razorbacks. I'm, okay. going, with, I'm going with the SEC. I'm, I think Arkansas is getting hot at the right time. Yeah, I think Kansas is better than UConn, and they were able to pull that one off. So I feel like they've they've figured something out. And that kid's post game interview where he cried and just talked about how much they've overcome. I was like, well, frick, I guess I'm an Arkansas fan now. I'm <laughs> just a sucker. Okay, uh, under that you've got um, Gonzaga UCLA. That is at eight forty five tonight. I had TCU UCLA in my picks. TCU got defeated, so it is Gonzaga UCLA, and I. St- I had UCLA winning that one, so I'm sticking with that pick. <laughs> Gonzaga and UCLA were my yep. two picks, but I also had UCLA beating Gonzaga tonight. Okay, perfect. Well, we have been aligned so far in these. Okay, and then, oh, yeah, 8 o'clock tonight, FAU against Tennessee. 
I mm. had Purdue and Duke in that, so I was wrong on both of those picks. I had Purdue coming out of that. So FAU, Tennessee, I'm I'm going to go Vols. I'm going to go here. I was saying with you, I had Purdue and Duke. Yeah. So both got bounced. <laughs> FAU, I watched play against Memphis. Memphis. They kind of got a little bit of a, a gift when I thought mm-hmm. it was a timeout in a game and yeah. Memphis got the ball. But then I saw them play the other night when they beat FDU and, you know, they stopped the run that FDU made. So I'm going to go Tennessee beating Duke, though, was huge. I thought that Duke was, was crazy. That game. Tennessee doesn't even have their starting point guard. And uh, I think they're rallying. So I'm going to go Tennessee in this game. Okay. Another coach who has just been in so many different situations and has been at this for so long, like his guys just looked prepared last week against a blue blood. So um, yeah, I'm going to go Vols. Okay. And then we get into tomorrow's games, 5 30 PM Alabama, San Diego, San Diego state. And I did have this one picked. I got that matchup, right. And I picked Alabama coming out of it, and I I think I'm going to stick with it. San Diego State looked a lot better. Their offense kind of put it together last week, which has been their struggle. They're a good defensive team, but we have said in the last several episodes, Bama just has size, and they have length, and they have depth, Mm -hmm. and I'm sticking with the tide as much as it pains me. Well, you make valid points. I'm talking about any, you know, person with the right mindset, I think, would would probably take Alabama in this game just because of their their strength and length. But that's not a sleep on San Diego State. Right. Uh, I was actually at the Auburn and Houston played. I stayed and watched the first half of the Alabama game. Mm-hmm. And they struggled against the Maryland team when Maryland big guy got in trouble. Before then, they jumped up 8-2 to two on Alabama. Yeah. And then that guy got two big fouls, and they had to put him on the sideline. That's why Alabama kind of made their run, but they struggled a little bit. And I'm not sure how healthy Miller is completely. I Mm -hmm. think he still has a nagging injury. But all that being said, there's going to be an upset somewhere this week. I know. And this is my upset. You're picking San Diego State? San Diego State. Shut up. Oh, my gosh. I hope you're right. (laughs) But, I mean, my bracket will be bombed, but that would be chaos. Okay, and then 8 o'clock tomorrow night, Creighton-Princeton. I had Baylor-Arizona for that matchup, so both are out on that. Uh, I truthfully don't know a ton about either of these teams, so I'm just going to go Creighton. (laughs) Well, I'm saying as you as a previous pick, I had Baylor and – Arizona. Missouri, Arizona, but I tell you what, Creighton has been playing really good basketball. I like Creighton in this game. Okay. Um, Yeah, I'm going Creighton. Okay. 6-15 6-15 tomorrow night, Houston, Miami. I had initially Houston, Indiana for this matchup, and mm. the Canes have made some noise down the stretch. But I've got Houston winning the whole dang thing, so they better win that one. I'm going Houston. Yeah, I had the same. Houston versus uh, Xavier. No, Houston versus uh, – I'm tripping. Houston versus Indiana. So okay. I had the same thing that you did. But mm. in this matchup – this is my favorite matchup of the weekend. I okay. really think, you know, it's hard to guard Miami's guards. They play small ball. They play really well. Houston, yeah. though, they look very strong in the second half against us. I think they they got what it takes. I'm going to go Houston in a, in a close one. Okay. And then finally, 845 tomorrow night, Xavier, Texas. Mm. I that's a, that's a 3-2. I did have that matchup picked, so – and I, I have Texas coming out of it. Yeah, I had Texas and Xavier playing this matchup. Uh, it's a really good matchup. I think both teams are well coached. But Texas is hot. Ever since they, they coach are. got fired. and Yeah, hired how it, crazy. Uh, yeah, you know, he got fired and hired, right? Uh, but he got <laughs> fired. But ever since he got fired, it's almost like they use that as motivation to, yeah. rally, to rally the guys. And this is a team that I would love to see a Houston Texas Elite Eight game. But that um, would be tough. So I, I think Texas wins this game. And I think that's going to be a big one to decide who goes to the Final Four, which is in the state of Texas, which is in the city of Houston. That's crazy. I mean, I would be shocked if the Big 12 champion does not make 
at least the Elite Eight this year because the Big 12 was the most stacked conference. I mean, they had like a four-way tie for first place like two weeks before tournament seating. So um, the fact that Texas was able to go on a run that weekend and win probably the most competitive conference this season, I fully expect that they at least get to the Elite Eight. So I'm going to lean with them, but – I guess we're probably halfway still in at this point. Next week, we'll yeah. preview the matchups for the Elite Eight and kind of do the same thing and work our way toward championship with our picks. And it's just been chaos already. So I look forward to hopefully more chaos this weekend. Well, yeah. it's going to be a great weekend. Enjoy your basketball. If you're checking out the baseball team, enjoy that as well. And we will be back probably Monday. I'm not used to saying that, but we will try and hit you with an episode on Monday. So make sure you're subscribed. So you get a notification of all of these new episodes that we are releasing here on Believe in Everything Auburn presented by Bet Online. So thank you so much for listening and watching. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. And we'll talk in a few days. War Eagle. War Eagle, everybody.